This is Matthew Gdenius, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a timeline on the computer. Uh, now, first thing you need to do to create a timeline is find information about your actual times and dates. Um, I would recommend not using Google to find your websites if you have other sources. You could try IPL.org, the Internet Public Library. This is a resource created by um, a few colleges that work together, Drexel University, University of Michigan, uh, a few different Florida State University as well. So you can actually go here and you can do a search for content that has already been located and checked for accuracy and for appropriateness for, for schoolwork. This was designed for college students and high school students to use. There's also a kids section for elementary school students and a teen section for uh, middle school, junior high, and high school. I'm going to go ahead and use websites that have already been located. If you know resources that already exist, that's the best place to go. So I'm going to go here to our student activities and to our gate page on the school website that I've created. And there's various links that have been found by me and provided to the students for a variety of topics. So this way we can go straight to, let's say uh, we wanted to do a timeline of Vivaldi's life. So let's go to read the descriptions. There's classical archives here that show a short biography and examples of compositions and there's a medium length biography. So we'll go ahead and open both of those. This is opening in a new tab. So I'll go back to the other tab by clicking up here and I'll open the other one just in case. So the next step would be to read through and actually take your time and read about and research uh, the person or the event or the topic that you're studying and write down the important times of what happened in that person's life or in the course of the event. It could be the building or construction of a, of a piece of architecture. Uh, it could be a person's life. It could be uh, a style of fashion or uh, a time period for when food, certain foods were eaten. Wide variety of topics you could cover in this way using a timeline. So we've got some information here. This is quite longer as you can see than this shorter bio here. If I click on the about bio, it's about a couple long paragraphs here. And so we can see that uh, we can find important events in his life, such as when he was born, 1678, uh, when he became a priest, ordained as a priest in 1703. So even just scan scanning through and skipping through, I can see certain dates and years when things happen. Now that I have my information, it's time to create the timeline. So once I've taken my notes and have all of that, I would go to Start All Programs, Microsoft Office. Now there's lots of different tools you can use to make a timeline. Um, they're not always in Microsoft Office. You can do it in Microsoft Word or even Excel or PowerPoint, but I'm going to show you how to do it in Publisher. Uh, anything I do in Publisher, pretty much the same thing can be done in Word or PowerPoint, but Publisher has a few added benefits if you plan on printing it out on paper. Microsoft Publisher is a program designed for laying out and creating uh, documents that are going to be printed on paper possibly as a poster possibly as a banner or a card or a pamphlet or even converted to a website it's fairly flexible that way um, like Microsoft Word however it gives you a few more options as well as pre-designed templates but we're gonna start with a blank print publication here so when you open this up it looks a lot like Microsoft Word you'll notice these dotted blue lines that's to indicate where a margin is on the one inch around each side. Now we could do a vertical timeline going straight down, but I'm going to do a horizontal timeline from left to right, since that's how we read from left to right. So what I would do is I'd choose File, Page Setup to change the page, Orientation, and Portrait means vertical or up and down, Landscape means horizontal, side to side. So I click OK. Now I could do a side to side timeline. The problem is I still don't have a lot of room on this one piece of paper. If I wanted to have more than three or four events, they would become very small text on the page. You can see this is 11 by 8.5 standard size sheet of paper. However, one thing we can do is we can actually, with this program, we can have it print over multiple sheets of paper that we combine together. So I'm going to try doing that for my timeline. Maybe I'll make it two sheets of paper. So I'll go to Page Setup, and instead of doing a full page, I'll change it to a banner. Now a banner lets you do multiple sheets of paper. This is a, a banner using vertical portrait orientation sheets. So I'm going to change it to landscape, so they're still sideways, long, stretched out. And it automatically sets it at 5 feet. 
technically the banner feature is used for actually making banners you would tape together and maybe paste up on a wall, tack up on a wall, or hang from a ceiling somewhere. I'm going to do a smaller banner, just two pages wide. So to do that, I would need to take my 11 inches here and multiply it by 2, 22 inches wide. However, when I do that, you'll see a little problem here. I'm going to go back to page setup. You'll see that it takes up more than two pages. It takes up two and a little bit more. This little red bar shows you how many pages it's going to require. And the reason why is because we have this overlapping of sheets here set up. That's sort of like a margin. I'm going to change that overlap and get rid of it entirely. Now this might leave a little bit of a gap in the middle, but it's a little bit easier to calculate how many sheets and how, how long your banner will need to be. So now that I have 22 inches and 0 inches of overlap, it will only print exactly two sheets that I can tape to a piece of poster board or I can uh, glue to something or tape together to create my entire timeline. You could just leave it as one sheet using full page as well if you want to do a smaller timeline. So now that I've got my page set up, I can go ahead and draw my timeline itself. There's a few tools to do that. I'm going to use Insert Picture Auto Shapes because Auto Shapes has things like lines. You can do just a plain arrow or block arrows. So I'm going to do a block arrow from left to right. And I'm going to leave plenty of room on the top and bottom of my banner here to actually add elements along the timeline. Now this looks a little strange. That arrow is very stretched out. So I can take this yellow diamond over here and use that to modify the shape. For example, to change the arrowhead. You can also use Format Auto Shape, or you can right click on it and choose Format Auto Shape to make some changes to it. For example, we could add a nice fill to it. Maybe I'll add a fill effect to give it sort of a 3D appearance. And you can see it added a little bit of shading in there. I could change the color as well. There's lots of things you can do. You can change the border styles, colors, etc. And if I add a fill effect now, it will automatically apply my new color. So I've got my timeline in there. Now we, what we need to do is we're going to show the oldest event we want on the timeline on the left side and the most recent event, or the latest event, on the right side. So left, we start with the oldest at the foot of the arrow, and then we go to the head of the arrow on the right. So let's go back and find some information. We found that Vivaldi was born in 1678. Let's see if this one has any additional information about that. Really doesn't. It's focusing on his accomplishments and his compositions. So all I could do there, since they, we have the date of his birth but no inform, other information so far, is I would go in and I would insert a text box. And again, you can do you can insert text boxes in PowerPoint or Word as well to do it this way. And when I click, it makes a very tiny little box. So I'm going to expand that bigger and we can start typing our text. Now keep in mind our text is Time New, Times New Roman font, 10 point font size, font size. So I could write born 1678. Now you can't see the text I typed because this page is 22 inches long and we have a very small font size here. So I would need to zoom in on that. This is 39% right now. If I make it 100%, it will show me part of the page and I can then use these scroll bars to scroll around and find the other parts of the page. So let's say we wanted to say he was born in 1678. We can center that with the center align button. It doesn't center on the page, it centers it in the text box. Uh, we can change the size of it if we want to make it a little bit bigger. We can make it bold with the B. You can change the font type. Now keep in mind you don't want to use super fancy fonts uh, for text boxes normally. For a title you might, up at the top, we'll add a title. But in the meantime, let's just go ahead and use a very plain font like Arial. So let's say I wanted to find a picture to go along with that born 1678. Well, there's a few ways to do that. We can go onto the internet and locate a picture to save to our folder, or we can see if there's pictures built right into this program into Microsoft Office that would be useful. If we want to use a picture in the program, that's insert. I just accidentally clicked on the page preview, so you can see what it'll look like when it prints out. It'll print out half the arrow on this side and the other half on this side. I'll go ahead and close that print preview. I'm going to insert a picture again, clip art this time. So maybe I'll just find a picture of a baby or a cradle or something like that to show when he was born. Visuals can help draw people's attention and give them a, a visual cue 
of what's happening at that point in time. And they don't always have to be directly related to your topic. It, I, don't, I don't have a picture of Vivaldi as a baby. So I could just type baby and click go. It says it's searching for media. So once it locates those images from the clip art collection, I'll go ahead and select one to add to the page here. Interesting, it says it found no results. Let's try it again. So you can see various results are showing up. Maybe I want to click this one. Pretend that's Vivaldi as a baby. So when I click on it, it's going to insert it on the page. But you notice, since it's a photograph, it's very large. Let me go ahead and zoom back out here. I'll go down to 33%. You can see it's pretty much the exact size of a full sheet of paper. So I'm going to shrink it down with the corner white dots, the handles in the corner. You don't want to use the side handles because it will distort the image. So I'm going to undo that with the undo button here. The green circle will rotate the image. We don't want to do that either. We just want to shrink it using the corner dots. And we can line that up with our text caption here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and zoom back in. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually take the text box and you can hold down shift and click on the picture. And now I've selected both of them. This image down at the bottom means I can group them together. If I click on that, they're now grouped and I can move them together as a whole unit. I can shrink them down. Now, it won't shrink the text, but it will shrink the text box along with the picture. So I can change it very easily once I group the picture and the words together. Finally, I want to tie that to the timeline. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can insert picture, auto shapes, and I'm just going to use a line again, the straight line. And I'll draw a line down like that. I could change the line thickness if I right click on it and choose format the auto shape. I can always, right now the weight is 0.75 points. If I make it two points, it's a little bit thicker. You can also put a box around this if you want to with the border tool up here with the line color button and the, the line border style. If I click on that and add a border to it, it'll make a border around that, that text box. So there's lots of ways you can modify this and edit it. You may not want to put your date up here. So instead of saying born 1678, 1678, you could say 1678, Vivaldi is born. Or you can just put a description and you can insert another text box down inside underneath your line. And you can have that text box say 1678. And so you can put your dates directly in the timeline. There's a variety of ways to do this. This is only, I'm giving one example of some methods. So you can either put your description in the box and put your date down on the timeline or you can put your your date and year in the box, add a picture and add your description. Now this is a very short description. Sometimes you might need something a little bit longer. To save space, let's say something happened shortly after 1678. I saw that he was ordained as a priest in 1708. Or I think it was actually 1703. Let's see. He was ordained as a priest in 1703. So if I wanted to add that, I could, I'm just going to copy and paste my time there, Control C and Control V to copy and paste it, and I'll add this further on the timeline. The further apart things happen, you want to show that space on the timeline. So this is 30 years, almost 30 years later, 25 years later. So when he's 25 years old, I want to leave a gap there. 1703, I can make another text box. Again, if you want to go ahead and copy and paste things, you can do that. I'm going to press Control C to copy, Control V to paste. What I have here is another text box now. And I'm going to move it down below. If I did it up above, I wouldn't really have room for both of these. See, they overlap. I wouldn't be able to center it. So by alternating sides of your timeline, you can go up and down and up and down and create plenty of space. Now I need to ungroup this because I'm going to change the picture and I'm going to change what I show. So I could say Vivaldi is ordained as a priest. Notice that little a dot dot dot. That means that this box does not fit all of the words. There's too many words, so I'll click on it, stretch it out to make room for the other words. For the image, if I want to change the picture, you click on the picture, then you can search for another one. Now, locating images on the internet takes some time to find 
copyright free images that you are legally allowed to use and to download them and save them to your folder so I'm not going to elaborate on how to do that right now but if you do have a file saved and you want to insert it from your files you would click insert picture from file I have other videos that demonstrate how you can actually locate and download images legally from the internet so if I type in priest I find a few different examples here so I'll go ahead and choose this one and when I click it it replaces the baby picture with that picture and then I can insert a line auto shape or I can just click the one I already created and copy and paste it down here and I can always stretch that line up to make it smaller if I need to so you can see I would go along the timeline keep going until I'm finished if I need to change the color of the text on these text boxes you can just click the box and uh, highlight the colors highlight the text and then you can change with this letter A up here as the font color so if I needed to make it a lighter color to make it visible you would choose the font color tool and the triangle lets you actually change to other colors if I click more colors I can find brighter ones probably want to keep the same color for each thing along the timeline and there you have it when you keep going to the end I'll zoom out and you can see we'll have a nice long timeline one last thing you will want to do before you print it out is to check and see what it looks like on the paper when you actually print so to do that you can go to file and let's expand this bar a little bit and go to print preview right here so what print preview does is it shows you a preview of what it'll look like when you print right now we have the printer set up as a black and white printer so it shows me the results in black and white you can see that the page gets cut down the middle because I set it up as a banner format so it's actually going to take multiple pages to print it out now the reason I said to check the print preview is not just for that overlap but also what happens if you have a full page actually here so let's say we have another event like this I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this one and it's somewhere in the middle of your document here well that can be a problem because if you file print preview let's see what it looks like you can see that that information is getting cut off and you can't even read the rest of the words on the other side of the paper so that image is getting cut and more importantly the words are getting cut so when you see something like this you'll need to make sure you go back and modify I'm going to click close to close this. Go back and modify where your items are on this timeline if you are doing a banner format. If you're doing a single page, this won't be an issue. But if you are doing it as a banner, you want to go back and move things around until they fit all on one page. That's not too bad. I could move it a little bit more if I wanted the, the outline of that box to still be there. So you have to be careful that you're not having your pictures and your words cut in half in the middle of your banner. 